Pokemon Radar here. We're just about to start episode four of the Pokey Radar podcast. Meet the Collector Series. Today, we have a very special guest. He's got over 400,000 subscribers on YouTube. He's one of the largest and fastest growing PokeTubers out there. Um, I enjoy watching his videos, opening up quite a bit of packs. It makes me quite jealous. Uh, today, we have Real Breaking Nate. And I've got you up on the uh, screen now. Perfect. All right. What's up? I, I'm honored to be here. I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> me too. Me too. It's crazy. When you, when you started this podcast, what, this is like your fifth episode? Or something? Uh, it's my, so I recorded my fifth episode over the weekend. This is my fourth live episode. I'm, I'm not going to lie because when you said you started it, I was like, oh, man, I kind of like to be on that. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's funny is, I mean, so we met at worlds in 2019 very very briefly in washington yeah. dc i was hanging out with lean Hart for a little bit and he he introduced me to you and unlisted leaf and i forget who else was there but um yeah that's where we met and then uh, i forget randomly i reached out and we started talking a little bit mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh we talked about this idea of like kind of like a netflix series or something of meet the collectors <laughs> yeah. and all that so so that was kind of the underlying idea that was in my head for a while and and when i started streaming uh video games and all that i was just doing it one day and someone's like hey you should just do a pokemon podcast I was like, all right let's do it so it came out of a whole bunch of bits and pieces i think you know us talking about that was was a big idea for that um i'm glad you decided to start it that's the best thing to do is just just dive in and do it yeah yeah absolutely so i'm still you know uh <laughs> low budget trying to figure out this thing here myself but i'm enjoying it having a lot of fun and, and again happy to have you here as well well thank you for having me i, I really do appreciate it. it means a lot and and shout out to the uh the breaking family that's joined in here today um if the volume is is okay let me know i see your voice is a little low but i can turn that up so all right perfect well let's let's jump right in so for those I'm ready. for for those that haven't tuned in before, this is a Meet the Collector series. So we're just kind of talking stories, talking how we got into Pokemon, and um, you know, it's something that I enjoy doing is sharing stories myself. So I want to uh, spread the love and get get some other people sharing their stories. So let's take it back to 1999. Um, oh, we were just a wee lad in the Midwest, right? We, I think we're both Midwest in, boys. In Indiana, yeah. Indiana, yep. I grew up in Michigan. Um, yeah. So just bear in the cold but uh what what was it like for you michigan nope i'm in california it's nice and warm (laughs) (laughs) i'm headed back for the holidays so i'm preparing i got my hat ready to go okay i'll I'll give you that that. i'm still stuck here (laughs) that's right i'll probably be back soon um so yeah let's let's take it back to 1999 what was it like for you when when pokemon hit the scene what was the first thing that brought your attention to pokemon i i mean it, it was it was one of those things that is uh, obviously in the nineties, it was, if you think about the huge things in the nineties, you know, you think about beanie babies, Furbies, you know, all those like big names and Pokemon was one of those. And uh, I just remember it, like it was weird because it was almost like the first week that Pokemon hit the United States. It was like an instant hit. It wasn't like a gradual climb. It was like the very first week it hit. It was huge. Um, and I started playing. I started playing the video game as soon as it got released. Uh, horrible at it. Were you horrible. Were you a red or blue version guy? Red. Okay. I'm red. I, yeah. I mean, I still have. You might be able to see on the back of my screen, back back here, or background. My original Game Boy is sitting back there. Oh, that's right. Uh, We've talked about that. You've got my the, original you, Game Boy. You've got the copy. real OG one. You've got the gray one. I had the see-through purple Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did talk about that. And so that's my original one right back there with my original copy and. Uh, Made some horrible, horrible trades throughout my throughout my time in, in <laughs> elementary school. You know, you thought you thought you're getting the good trades, but you're really not. Right. Um, and then Pokemon cards came out, and then that seemed to catch my interest a lot more. Um, that seemed seemed to be more my speed, um, and just the artwork. I, I love the artwork, and I just love the idea of collecting. Um, I've always been. I've always been bitten by the collecting bug. I've always collected stuff throughout my entire life. And, you know, once you collect something, it's like, it's, it's a deep, deep hole. Like there's like no what did, out. so did, uh, I mean, for, for, for my sake, my dad was a big collector of like coins and baseball cards back in the day. So he kind of brought that in for me and my brothers with sport cards to start. And then 
obviously Pokemon came out, and we started doing yeah. that. Do you have a similar story? Do you have brothers and sisters that were doing it too? Was your dad a big part of that? So my my parents were huge into going to antique stores on the weekends, okay, and nice. um, it was so boring as a kid, like in elementary, like going to these antique stores and just looking at all this old stuff that you just don't understand and you have no clue. And we went to them almost every single weekend. And I eventually was just like, I just need to like collect something. And um, at the time, Star Wars was actually not that big. Um, it was kind of on a, like a downfall. Okay. Uh, this was before the special edition original trilogy, trilogy got released. Okay. Uh, so antique stores were just littered with like Kenner action figures um, of Star Wars. And I would just buy up Star Wars toys and start collecting Star Wars stuff. Okay. And um, that's kind of where it started off with me collecting wise. Nice. Uh, just because I was bored. Side note, did you ever get into the Wizards of the Coast Star Wars trading card game? Or you're not familiar yeah. with it? It did? Yeah, no, I, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, me too. I, I actually ended up buying a lot uh, recently because I just wanted to open some stuff. Really? Um, yeah. It was mostly the Attack of the Clones series, which is apparently the most lame series out there. But, of course, that's what I had as a kid, so I enjoy it the most. But um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I kind of grew up playing a lot of card games and stuff like that, too. You know, going to card game stores a lot. Okay. And uh, I, I've probably had my hand in just about every every card game. Did you do the natural progression of Pokemon to uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Then the Magic the Gathering? And then with no. a whole bunch of other little... No. Oh, no. No, it what actually... Um, I, I've actually never played Magic. I've never collected it. Okay. Never collected Yu-Gi-Oh! Um no no offense to any Yu-Gi-Oh fans out there no disrespect <laughs> at all but I always thought it was kind of like a knockoff so I was like no nope, I'm a Pokemon fan okay uh, you know I, I had my loyalty so um so I, I collected that I played a uh I played a wrestling card game for a while a okay. WWF WWE interesting uh, card game called Raw Deal for a while okay and I was big into that but Pokemon's always been my been my go-to Okay. I mean, very cool. anytime you open up a pack of any set of Pokemon, it just it's nostalgia for some reason. So you got right into base set, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um. I mean, same story for me, and this gets brought up a lot. I didn't know what Shadowless base set was. I didn't know what first edition was. I don't. Do I don't even think it existed in the Midwest. Um. But how? So how how deep did you get into this? Were you getting a lot of cards? You know, kind of from your parents, or were you? Kind of the I typical like, one, two pack every now and then um, from I the store. I felt like I was getting a, a good amount. Okay. Uh, I, I wasn't overboard. I never I never had gotten a booster box when I was a kid. So nothing like that. Um, you know, like maybe five or six packs. You know, not, not nothing too crazy, but still something uh, to be very um, happy, you know, yeah. and, and uh, appreciate. Um, but... I remember, but but the packs were so hard to find though. So mm -hmm. like, even if you found a couple packs, that was like, that was like a message from above that you found. <laughs> Mom, Dad, gotta get them, gotta get them. <laughs> right. Well, well, I remember like a couple, a couple times I would go to Walmart, um, and we, we we'd always go shopping like early in the morning, and they kept Pokemon cards back in in the toy section. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, um. Obviously, they don't do that really now, but um, they kept them back in the toy section, and they would never have any, and I would always look around, and this is going to kind of fast forward to things that I've done on YouTube now, but I'd always look around for, like, booster packs that people had hid. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> and I, there was, like, two or three times where I would find, like, a fat stack of, of base set booster packs just, like, behind a shelf that maybe oh, wow. I felt like a stalker um, – uh, <laughs> Not like like a, a shelf stalker, like yeah, yeah, might yeah. have you know put them back there and was like, okay, I'm going to buy these later because it would be like the entire row mm -hmm. of, of booster packs. Now my parents would never let me get the entire row, but um, <laughs> as much as I would beg them, shame but, on them. They don't know what it, I, what they missed out on. <laughs> right. I always tell my mom now. I'm like, look, you said Pokemon was just a phase, <laughs> <laughs> and now you're doing it for a living, which yeah. I, I am extremely jealous of, and and. All the haters are extremely jealous of. So, <laughs> well done with that. Well done with that. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so, so looking back, you know what? My my story was that I stopped at like the gym series. So, uh, okay. up through like two thousand, maybe two thousand one. What was? Were you 
through and through all the way with Pokemon till today, or was there a stoppage period for you? I, I think I think if you grew up in the '90s, um, especially when during Pokemon's like initial boom, um, I think everybody had some period where they kind of either stopped collecting or they slowed down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I never I never completely stopped collecting, but I definitely slowed down. Um, I would say um, the the major point where I I slowed down would have been right after the neo era okay so after those neo sets um you know i'm getting into uh middle school high school you know i slowed down a little bit only bought a pack here and there Mm -hmm. um, still collected it but and then it ramps back up you know obviously to now where it's buying probably a little too much (laughs) so yeah which uh, so neo era was kind of was kind of my dip off if you want to say there was a dip off yeah i completely missed out on those which is a shame because silver and gold era was my favorite as a kid playing those games catching that shining gyarados you know catching the gear that that has the real nostalgia for me was that i played silver version but i never got into the that card series uh, my oldest brother was kind of the the leader of of what we did, so he pushed uh-huh. along to Magic the <laughs> Gathering quick, and we just followed him. And I dropped off Pokemon pretty quick. The Neo <laughs> the Neo era stuff has like some of the best artwork still to this day. Uh, oh so yeah, yeah, and I it, it's it's amazing. I've I've opened very few Neo, but it's unbelievable. It's been, like I'm happy when I pull a non hollow rare out of there because they're just right. the art is beautiful. It's great. There's very few sets that I I look at and I go, I don't want to open this up because I want to keep it sealed. Like I usually mm-hmm. it doesn't bother me, you know. Um, but for some reason that Neo stuff, like every time I come across a pack, I'm I'm like, ah, oh, should I really open it? <laughs> well, that's but what we're I here would... for. That's that's what they're made for. They're meant to be opened. Exactly. I always you know. cave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, thankfully I've opened enough where I can kind of hold on to stuff now, but. Uh, yeah, I've wasted so much money opening up vintage packs, uh, but man, it's 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 priceless. It's a it's a beautiful thing to do. It's it's for that for that moment when you open that one pack, it just takes you back to yeah. to. I mean, it, it's almost like you transport back to you know your your bedroom as a kid, or mm-hmm. you know in the parking lot opening up your booster pack because you can't wait till you get home. Uh, there's so much mem- memories. Right, and when you got that binder open and you're just putting the cards in, that's that's the way to do it. That's the way to have cards is in a binder, get the set right. going, and, and that that's died out, you know, with with trading cards as a whole is collecting sets, and that's what I love seeing from you. Um, I mean, not, no no hate, but as cringy it is to watch some of your videos <laughs> and you know, le- you know all these guys, um, you know, I I love that you're you're doing it for the love of it and you're collecting the set with like you said not doing any trades or buying any singles you're opening the packs to to finish yeah, sets it, and of course you're having a little struggle with the hidden fates one right now but um <laughs> how many packs it, do you think you've opened <laughs> it, it way too many i mean i i know it has to be like i know it's over 500 probably it's probably like around 800 wow and i'm still missing 11 cards from it yeah, and that's going to be tough. Are they all really rare cards, or are they just Not you know, really. a couple of random they're just, ones? They're just random cards now, like Shiny Greninja. Oh, jeez. Uh, it's, it's nothing, like, too crazy. Like, I yeah. pulled two Shiny Charizards, like, right off the bat. Yeah. Um, and uh, it took me forever to pull, like, a Reverse Hollow Lapras from <laughs> from the set. That's um, really annoying. <laughs> but I just I just enjoy it. Like, it, it to me, it, it's all about the journey of getting there and, and the process and just the search and the hunt. I just love the whole, the whole process, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I could, could I have saved a bunch of money and went out to eBay or, you know, whoever and bought all these cards. Yeah. But the fun's over, right. You know, you go out and buy them and the fun's done. Right. Um, exactly. I, I like that journey. Uh, yeah. That's what, that's what I keep going back for is that journey. Yeah. But also, you know, going out and, if you look at sets like first edition base set where you can't buy the packs and collect it like that, right? You know, going on that search to local game stores or finding local people to trade with in person is fun too. So that's something that I, I enjoyed doing. At least when I got back into the hobby, was finding my local stores that I shopped at as a kid and seeing what they had. Yeah, I mean, when it when it comes to older stuff, I love to find, I love to find just like something out there in the wild. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That like. It's not at a game shop. It's, it's it's something that's like at a flea market or a garage sale or or you know just one of those types of places. And 
It's just like a hidden gem where it's not meant that's, to be. Yeah. 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 That's what I just, I absolutely love. And that's what I'm always on the search for. Yeah, like that's the that's kind of stuff really, I want to find. That's cool. I think one of my, I've got quite the vintage collection now. Um, yes, you do. And one of my favorite pieces is a first, an empty first edition base set box, which I got from the local store that I shopped at with my brothers and kids. And it had to be displayed at some point while I was in that store in 1999. Yeah. Even though the box, you know, the box is still worth a couple hundred bucks being what it is, but it's nowhere yeah, near my most expensive piece. But I love that thing because it's, it has it that attachment. Yeah, it has that. Yeah, exactly. You remember seeing it as a kid. It might have been the exact one you looked yeah. at as a kid. Yeah, which is crazy to think about, but um, yeah, really cool. All this stuff exists somewhere out there. You know, that's what I like to think about. Somebody, somebody has a garage full of just like base set booster boxes and they don't realize what they have. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. They're still out there. I'm finding them all the time. Well, not all the time, but I'm finding You're them finding quite them a bit. More than, more than most. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I do. That's my thing. So. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> You're the pro at that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Which, which is a lot of fun. I wish I could, uh, I, I, I look back at it now and I wish I could have done some YouTube videos like you did with, I mean, just my, I guess my finds, my treasure troves of people that had all this stuff. Oh, dude, I'd, I'd love to see that stuff. Yeah, but There's, now at this point, like it's almost impossible to keep that up. You're never too late. Hey, if you, yeah, you know, if you find something good, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it, it's also one of those things that when it comes to YouTube and uh, content creating in general or Twitch, like we're on right now, um, those platforms weren't taken that serious five years ago. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you told somebody that you did YouTube for a living or Twitch for a living or something like that, it was almost kind of, uh, you know, you kind of got laughed at or people would say, oh, go get a real job. Right. And, and now it, it look at it, it's huge and kind of like everybody wants to do it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think so, that, yeah, there's kids, uh, there's been st uh, statistics now where kids are like 80% of them want to be a YouTuber or something when they take, you know, their yeah, test in school. It's just crazy. It, it's a serious thing. And I say, yeah. go for it. No, yeah. you know. Don't worry about what about other people think. When did you start? Uh, 2014 is when I officially started my channel. Your Pokemon channel. Did, did you do YouTube before that? No. Okay. No, I didn't. 2014 is when I started it. Um, it, it. I've always wanted to just like entertain people, make people smile, and just kind of make a difference in, in mm -hmm. my own weird and quirky way. Um, and I just got tired of working at the job i was at i was working as a manager at american eagle okay and i just went in one day and just threw my keys on the ground was like all right i'm done i quit i'm gonna go be a youtuber <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's powerful <laughs> and um i went and did it for a year and it did not work and i had oh. to go find a job <laughs> yeah. so um i went and there was a local donut shop that was opening up in my town i i didn't have a car so um, it was perfect. I could walk to work. I went and did that and did YouTube at the same time. And YouTube was starting to kind of take off. And I respectfully told him, I was like, hey, I love working here, which I did. I honestly did love working at the place. I was like, but hey, I, I, this is kind of like my dream and I want to see it through. So I'm going to mm -hmm. have to put my two weeks in and um, do this full time. And, wow. Uh, that's where I, I'm, I'm, I'm at today. But I still go back and work. So Okay. Um, if if they ever need help or something, they call me up and I, I go back and I put on the apron and I. That's I, awesome. I do my old job. <laughs> Get like, some free donuts I, I while it. you're at it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got. I ate way too many donuts when I was there. <laughs> but I, I just I love that kind of stuff. I, I I grew up in a small town my entire life, so I love the small town feel and okay. small town vibe. So doing something like that is, is this makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's that's. One of the biggest things for I think I think most YouTubers is is coming in and and doing something to entertain and make people you know just put a smile on their mm -hmm. face. So that's really great to to hear that from you and understand that. I mean, now you're at a point where, which I don't know how much you could talk about this if all, at all, where you've had Pokemon the company actually reach yeah. out to you and, and do events for them, work for them, you know, do sponsored videos. What can you yeah. talk so about that at all? So um, they've sponsored they've sponsored some of my videos, and it's always been kind of like a dream to kind of get you know the nod from Pokemon, you know, mm -hmm. them kind of being like, you know, we like what you do and we appreciate it, and, um, and they sponsored some videos, and you know, like 
people have been seeing it like the countdown calendar. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. Yeah, right where's there. mine? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's like I'm so I'm I'm so appreciative and I'm so grateful that they they've seen what I've done and they enjoy what I do and it's just it's a huge honor. Like I, as a kid to think that one day Pokemon, uh, the Pokemon Company uh, International would see something I do would be I just couldn't imagine it because I remember writing letters to Nintendo as a kid like asking them to make Pokemon cards for me so oh, like wow. I would draw I would draw up like a Pokemon card and be like hey could you make this card like specifically for me you know like <laughs> when you're a kid. That's um, and uh, so to think you know that the fast forward now that they would see my stuff and uh, um, enjoy it. It's just, it's, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. And I appreciate it so, so much. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. I mean, that's something that I'm sure all of us would love to be a part of, but ha have you been able to visit their headquarters or anything? Or No, I have not. So Pokemon, okay. if you're watching, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to come out and visit. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That'd be real cool to see what I, they, they got going on. I've always heard there. stories of just like awesome things that are just in there, like statues and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's just, I want to go so bad to just experience, not even film, you know, like right. just, just experience it and soak it in and just talk to some of these people that are creating one of the things that I love the most in life. Uh, yeah. Just be just an awesome experience. Right. I actually, I had a business trip in, in Seattle not too long ago and went and visited Wizards of the Coast headquarters. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, although they got rid of Pokemon or lost the license back in 2003, I thought it was still cool to go see it because I think I, yeah. And, and I went and visited. Really cool office, really small, but like yeah, big statues of their their uh, uh, Magic the Gathering guys and whatever else they did. Um, they actually gave me a little gift bag too. Um, Wait, did you just walk right in? Yeah, I just walked right in. I was like, hey, I'm a I'm a man child. I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see what's going on. Say hello, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they. The, the receptionist just kind of welcomed me, gave me a gift bag with some Magic the Gathering packs and kind of showed me around a little bit. It's really Whoa. cool. Yeah. Yeah, they were really nice was about there it. Any, was there anything of Pokemon there? No. Just like a little nod to it No, at all? nothing. No? I, yeah. They, I think there's a bad taste in their mouth from that. I, I, I don't think that relationship ended well. So, um, I, I But I, I would guess in the archives somewhere deep down, they've got some, they've got some cool stuff. Probably some, some boxes or something. I had a layover earlier this year in um, in Seattle, and I it was like a two hour layover, and I was like, "Ooh, I bet I can make it to Pokemon <laughs> Like, to just look at the building, not even yeah. go inside, just like look at the building. Um, but I didn't do it. Yeah, that's that's a risky time to do that, but I'm sure you'll get out there eventually. They'll they'll they'll, they'll have you out. Uh, that'd be a blast. I'd be honored. Just let me know. I'll come. I'll come hang out with you. <laughs> a little bit of a ways, but I'll make, I'll and find it. Four hundred thousand, you know, friends that want to come with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But uh, yeah, I I opened up a uh, fossil theme deck not too long ago, and it had a little Wizards of the Coast kind of like uh, a customer. The survey. Yeah, thing. the survey, and I filled it out and sent it off a couple of days ago. So I'm, I saw all that on I'm, your Instagram story. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if it'll go to the right place or if I'll even get a response. <laughs> so I've always wondered about that, like filling out that old stuff and see if they just respond just for the laughs. Right, right. I'm, I, I know a lot of people that have contacted them about certain products and asked them about things with Pokemon related, and they, they just turn you down and, and move on because the people working there now don't know anything about it. Yeah, there's probably a lot of people working there now that weren't there yeah. back in that era. So, yeah, understandably so. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so diving more into the collecting side, I, I, you know, you have some very unique things, especially <laughs> a specific one or two that I actually don't know the one, the yellow one behind you that I want to yeah. hear more about. I know you've, you've got a, a video coming out about the, uh, the Pokemon Snap Machine there, but... Um, you got to give us some details. I, I want to know the story a little bit about how you got that thing. <laughs> you can see it pretty good. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, it was, so I have this like mental list of like, you know, top 10 things that I, I want the most and in, in just Pokemon collecting. And at the top of that list was a Pokemon Snap Station. There's just something about a Pokemon Snap Station that is just so nostalgic. I mean, it's Blockbuster, it's Pokemon 
it's N64. It's all like wrapped in one. And that was my most wanted item. And so I've been looking for one for quite some time. And they'll, they'll pop up here and there. I think they're getting a little bit more popular. Um, I don't want to say that I might have uh, uh, made the made the uh, value of those go up a little bit. But <laughs> <laughs> That's ever how this since, works. Uh, ever since I've started posting and talking about it, um, I have seen zero pop up, which is a little unusual. Wow. So um, uh, one randomly popped up on a Sunday night. Um, what on Craigslist? On, on Facebook Marketplace. Okay. Um, that's like my hidden gem. And now I've let yeah. it out. Everybody knows the good Facebook marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it popped up on a Sunday at like 4 p.m. And it was uh, it was about four hours away in Ohio. Wow. And I, I messaged a guy and I was like, hey, I'll come get it right now. I will leave this house and I will pay you in <laughs> cash for this. And he's like, yeah, I, I got an offer on it already. But the guy wants to, you know, wants to make payments on it. He's like, but if you come get it right now, and you pay in cash full, it's all yours. And I'm like, all right, give me your address. I'm on my way. <laughs> wow. How much and cash was it, it? I got to ask. Uh, if, if I remember correctly, uh, I think it was 1200 What? That's way lower than I would have imagined. It's in great, perfect working condition. So I got it for, uh, I got it for 1200 I was like, yeah, give me your address. Come get it right now. I turned to my wife. I'm like, hey, do you want to go take a random last minute trip to Ohio? <laughs> and she had to be at work the next morning at like 7 a.m. Wow. Um, and this is four hours there and four hours back. Yeah. So we go and I get there and I've never done anything on Facebook Marketplace before. So I'm mm -hmm. extremely, extremely nervous. Um, yeah. You just be, don't know who you're going to meet. Yeah, you got to be careful with that stuff. Yeah. And, and so... And and the other thing was is that I I was hoping that he wasn't pulling my leg, you know, that I was right. going to get there and it was going to be a fake address or something like that. A couple guys there uh, to take the cash from you and run away. Yeah, you never know who you're going to encounter. You got to be careful about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I got there. He had it setting up in his driveway already. Play, uh, you know, it was plugged in and playing, and uh, he kind of did the rundown of everything. And he was super super nice, such an awesome guy. I, I talked to him for a couple hours. Um, and he invited me in to see the rest of his collection. It wasn't even a Pokemon collector, just a video game collector okay. of stuff. And he invited me in to see his video game collection. And the dude had skee-ball machines and all types of arcade <laughs> machines just in his basement. And I ended up buying a couple other Pokemon things off of him. So I went for the Snap Station yeah. came back with a lot more. Wow, that's incredible. And I, I think a great investment. I mean, the last time I heard numbers for one of those things, it was like five to $8,000 for a snap station. It's, so I think crazy. you did pretty well. And yeah, uh, and I got extra, I got um, extra ink that's unopened. I got extra printing paper that's un uh, unopened. Um, I got unused cards. Wow. All, all kinds of stuff. And that's the truly limited stuff that, that will disappear eventually, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, the the or snap stations are going to be around as long as people take care of them, but that ink and that that printing paper that's going to be the hard stuff to find. I mean, just yeah. a an unopened uh, unopened ink cartridge is like eighty dollars if when they do pop up. Wow, it's gosh, some that's cool stuff. Yeah, and we've talked about it. It works great, and I know you've yeah. posted some some photos of of it. So, man, that There's thing a, is so cool. Is there any way to get in? You know, uh, like pokemon stadium in there and you can start playing that as well <laughs> yeah 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 so it, it takes there's actually um i don't know if you can see it on the screen but there's actually a pokemon stadium sticker on it so like right over pikachu's face okay yeah that's a, a pokemon stadium sticker so cool. you can actually put stadium in there as well wow. uh, and print off pictures from that the only really? thing it's missing it's missing two things um there was like a little cardboard cutout that goes on the top of it okay and then for the key to open it up, there was a Pokemon Snap like rubber keychain. Ooh, we gotta find that. Which is pretty rare. Yeah, uh, that goes for usually around a hundred. So okay. Oh, are, so they're they're they've been out there. Okay. Nice. Yeah, they they pop up. I had a chance to buy one, but I didn't have the Snap Station yet. So I was like, I'm not gonna buy it if I don't have the Snap Station. Shame on you, man. Now I'm kind of wish. I know. I know. <laughs> I you're, made a mistake. You're lucky I wasn't still in Michigan. That might have popped up in my Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be bidding against each other. That's awesome, man. That's a really cool piece to have. I know. And then that, the, the arcade yeah. machine. What is Facebook that? 
Close to. Where? Uh, wh- what is it? I've never seen one of those before. So it's from, it's 2001, I believe, or 2002. It's one of those two years. I can't remember specifically. Um, my light's glaring in it right now, but mm-hmm. basically, it, I mean, it's an arcade machine. If you get 20 points, a prize drops out at the bottom of it. Um, but there's a bunch of balls that drop down. And you have to spin the the little Pokeball wheel right there, okay. and the Pikachu catches all the balls. So kind of like a Plinko situation. Yeah, I was about to say it looks it looks like Plinko. It's got those little rods. Um, it has Veronica Taylor's uh, voice in it as Ash Ketchum. Oh, and who you've met? That was I, I've met Veronica Taylor one yeah, time. But, yeah. Um, but uh, um, that was also in my top ten list as well. Really, that's something I never even heard about. How that's. It's one of those things that it's just I found out about it by doing a video. Okay. And, um, oh, that the when the Pikachu car video. Yeah. Where yeah. you met. So I, yeah. I found out about it and it popped up in Facebook Marketplace legit the next town over from where I live. Jeez. Everyone go and, to Indiana, Ohio if you want Pokemon stuff <laughs> or weird, so weird I, I Pokemon like, stuff. Yeah, I paid the guy, I think, 1400 for it. Okay. For that machine. And uh, he... He hauled it up himself. He, he loaded it up and hauled it over to my house for me. Well, that's much so, nicer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. What what else is on this top 10 list now that you've knocked off number one and whatever number that one was? Okay. Well, nobody started going after these things because I've been on the lookout for a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm really into into like advertising stuff, um, yeah. uh, just like promotional stuff, things like that. So things that are just a little bit harder to find. Um, so... Uh, anybody that kind of follows uh, stuff that I upload uh, knows I'm a big fan of, of food items from, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. Is that mac uh, and cheese behind you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we got mac and cheese. <laughs> mac and cheese back there. We got cereal. Okay. Um, I got some Pop-Tarts down there, <laughs> some fruit roll-ups. Um, but they released uh, Pokemon Popsicles okay. back, back around that time and Pokemon Egos. And so I I'm remember trying... those. I remember the, like the Pokemon popsicles from like the ice cream trucks, the ones that are shaped and have the gumball, like eyeballs. Yeah. yeah so there's like, like Pikachu and Gengar, um, but the, I'm looking for an empty box. Okay. Of egos and, uh, and popsicles. Okay. Those are like some of my holy grails, and they they legit never pop up. Yeah. I mean, I don't think any have ever popped up on eBay in the past few years. Well, that's got to be a tough one because any of those that are saved and they melt, it'll ruin the box. Maybe exactly. Most likely, exactly. I mean, just that, that just frozen stuff in general. People don't tend to think to save like cereal. Mm-hmm. It's easy to save, you know. Mac and cheese, easy to save. You don't think about saving something that was once cold, though. Right, right. So if anyone finds one, give it to Nate. Yes, start yes, looking. I will pay. I will pay you. <laughs> no, he won't. It's free. <laughs> 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 that's awesome all right yeah a bunch of quirky items so uh, let me let me ask you what is on your most wanted list what's on my pokemon radar <laughs> yeah well, uh, I, I didn't say it, but... there, there's the pun um my most wanted list is a and this is a, a big one it's going to be hard to obtain it, it's a first edition base set box a sealed one which okay. we all know is quite valuable and um mm-hmm. there's been the recent uh mishap with tca gaming if anyone watches his videos where he had a a resealed box and was scammed out of one um so it's a very tricky item to buy given the the low quantity that's available and um the high risk of buying one with with a lot of scammers out there so that's my biggest piece that's what i that was my goal from day one when i got back into the hobby maybe 2016 um I haven't been doing this extremely long, but long enough to consider myself uh, an expert because I know as much as anyone on at least the English side of, of Pokemon. Yeah. So that's that's my biggest thing. That's going to be, you know, it's probably my most unattainable, unattainable uh, uh, item as well. <laughs> but uh, you, we'll get there. You, you'll probably find it one day. One day you'll we'll get there. At a random garage sale. Yeah, that's that's the key. <laughs> <laughs> but and I would, uh, honestly, I feel a little bit safer though finding it at a garage sale because then yeah. most likely the person is just getting rid of it and they're not trying to scam anybody. They right. Don't know what they have. That's the dream: finding it from somebody that doesn't know what they have. <laughs> 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 that's that's the dream. But uh, I've I've recently gotten uh, I was able to open up a, a heavy pack for the first time ever 
um, with a deal I did with Swolpoke, who was one of my guests before. Yeah. Um, we bought a bunch of packs together, and there happened to be some heavy ones in there, so we split them up. And I, I had to open one, and I, I pulled a Nine Tails, and it was beautiful. I thought it was a Charizard for a second because it was red. You, you saw the red, yeah. I was so pumped up, but it, either way, it was one of the greatest experiences ever um, to open up one of those. Now I just got to get that sealed box and look at you it forever. Get it. You get it. Don't give up on <laughs> one it. One day. Don't give up on it. One day. But, uh, yeah, that, that, that one won't make my bank account happy, that's for sure. <laughs> you got to – when you get when you get that vintage stuff, do you smell it? Oh, I do, I do everything to it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you got to get that vintage smell. Yeah, out. yeah. It's it, – those are just – I've never – I mean, that's something that we've talked about uh, on my other podcasts is – as a kid, like I didn't even realize you could buy a booster box. I just thought you could get packs because oh, yeah. I didn't know what was going on. I was buying packs and opening them. And then when I realized you can get boxes, you can get cases of these things. Like I was like, wow, like, I wish I was older back then and had money. I could have just bought everything. <laughs> and yeah. it's, it's so much fun to, to hold on to something like that and just look at it. <laughs> well, I, well, like I was saying earlier, with how hard it was to find, at least in my area, it was so hard to find pokemon booster packs in general uh and when you did find them it was like no more than 10 you know like i yeah. i don't think as a kid i ever saw more than 10 booster packs at one time and and like you were saying to to even think that there would be a box out there right. or a case you know right uh, you don't think of that stuff as a kid because you've never seen it so you don't know mm -hmm. it exists yeah yeah and then once you get it when you're 26 and rip into it <laughs> it's so much fun it's so much fun it's just a little bit more pricier now oh yeah yeah so yeah. Uh, be responsible <laughs> yeah, but, be, uh, what, what was your fun. favorite set from back in the day what's what's the number one um, set that brings you back to that time you know, I, I i love i love neo stuff um mm -hmm. going back to that it's just i think there's a lot of nostalgia around neo just because of the feelings i had when when the set came out and when gold and silver came out um just to think that like oh my god there's more pokemon out there like there's more than just this 151 like there's yeah. actually more um to just be in that mindset of just all these new pokemon um was, was kind of crazy but i mean i as as cheesy as it sounds it's like it, it's base set yeah uh, because that's where it started you know you right. gotta you gotta appreciate where it kind of all starts off for you like i remember my mm -hmm. first booster pack i ever opened up was a hollow venusaur as my rare wow yeah uh ever since then i, w I was hooked so it, it's got to be base set just okay. for the the feelings and the attachment to it do you still have your original cards when you were a kid or did you some of them yeah not, no no and because you you know you make some dumb trades well i started so like when i got back from college and i didn't have a job I started selling them to make some money and I quickly realized that this is stupid <laughs> and you sold them very cheap too. Didn't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, I started to replace them and you know, cause there, it was a collection of mine and my brother's cards. So I was kind of selling them off our cards <laughs> for myself. Um, but I ended up replacing them and, and putting the set back together. So it's all good. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I, it, it's, pretty common that you know jungle and fossil were the most abundant then so that was what most of us really remember because there were yeah. so much more of them than base set and they were easier to, to get but um uh, uh, my favorite sets were the gym sets just for the artwork and having the oh, yeah. the gym leaders attached to them it just had a mm -hmm. more feel to the to the game for me which that's where we all started because that's how pokemon started yeah. was was the video game so that's what i really loved and uh that's that's like, probably yeah, my favorite set those, or sets expanded on the world of Pokemon. You know, the gym mm -hmm. sets, um, the Team Rocket set, all that kind of opened up Pokemon just a little bit more. Right, uh, right. And I wish to, I wish the modern stuff would go back to something like that. I mean, you see little bits and pieces of yeah. evil Pokemon or, you know, dark, darker looking artworks, you know, looking at the 20th anniversary Team Rocket set from Japan. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's really cool Giovanni artwork, really cool Team Rocket artwork, but you just don't see... It's so... And yeah, I know it's meant for kids. It's a kid game, but I, give me I something that's a little I, here's the thing, like, tougher. I know, I know. People always say it's meant for kids, but I really don't feel that way. I, I, I like, I know, understand that, like, it's for kids as well. But mm -hmm. I really think they have in mind every single age group. Yeah, I, I really do. Like, um, I know people say that stuff is made for kids all the time, but I really think that at least Pokemon, they're making it for everybody because they they know how much nostalgia is out there 
Yeah, um, I think I think it. Japan is more in tune with that because they have yeah. a lot of special releases. They have a lot of, you know, they they got a lot more going on there than, mm-hmm. than out here. So I hope that the the U.S. side and I guess the whole English side of of Pokemon starts to take into account that more because i'm i have faith I, yeah i think i know they, they know what they're doing okay uh, good you know, like, they, they've been around i mean it's the thing they've been around for this long they gotta know what they're doing right yeah yeah um you know and they and they they give us a little bit every now and then you know i think that shiny charizard was a nod to yeah to you know 90s fans yeah that was that was pretty nice i actually yeah i pulled two of those in 15 packs <laughs> 15 packs 15 packs yep it was great. <laughs> and then I was done with Hidden Fates. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you wanted was just the, that, that shiny. All I needed. All I needed to get my, my uh, the, the pleasure out of opening up those packs and, and be done with it. I still actually got a couple of ETBs back here that I might have to open soon. But I want to hold on to some for, for the future just oh, to yeah. see what happens. My closet is just still full of like sealed Hidden Fates. Yeah. I got, I've gotten so much of it. Save some. Just... Save some. I mean, as much as the new stuff is overprinted and people talk about the overhype and all that. That Charizard is going to be something that people will want to chase forever. So, tw- oh, yeah, 20 usually. years down the line, especially with the odds of pulling that one in 300 packs or whatever it is, mm-hmm. everyone's going to want to keep buying Hidden hit Fates. So, it, it's going to do really well, I think, in the future. And especially if you think about the fact of just like, when will we ever see a shiny Charizard again? I mean, right. the last time we saw one was Wizards of the Coast. Right. Right. With uh, Neo, uh, Neo Destiny. Yeah. So. You know, it might be another 10, 15, 20 years before we see another shiny Charizard. Oof. <laughs> or it could be next year. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> They'll start doing the gold version of it and all that. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to love Charizard, right? Yeah, always. It doesn't always. matter how many they print of those. You're always going to want a Charizard. Yeah, absolutely. It's always a safe card to buy, a safe card to invest in. Just wait for the hype to die down a little bit because when that, that first black label, the Beckett 10, sold for 10 grand, uh, Everyone, at least that I talked to, knew that was the dumbest purchase anyone could have made, and we've seen it now drop to thousand yeah. dollars or whatever it is. So it, it's um that the the hype around or just the the whole hidden fates thing was just crazy. I hadn't yeah. seen I hadn't seen that much buzz uh, over Pokemon cards in. I mean, Pokemon cards are are huge and they always have been, but mm-hmm. it was almost like being back in the nineties. Like, yeah with that base set and just the craze i mean because everybody even non-pokemon fans just everybody was searching for hidden fates yeah it was a fun moment it was yeah that one month period two month period was Mm -hmm. it sucked because i couldn't get any (laughs) but it was it was fun i remember like every single day i was driving to every single store looking for it every single day and uh, i remember like going to gamestop and they were just like we have people calling nonstop about this like what is it yeah because they they know that i i do uh, Pokemon content, and they're just like, well, "What is it? Everybody is calling about this. Our phone's going off the hook." Mm-hmm. And it, it's just, I just hope we see more of that stuff in the future. Yeah, yeah. I I ended just, up just, having to uh, pre-order from GameStop, and luckily I, I made good friends with them, and they let me get pretty much all their stock, which I feel bad about everyone else, but everyone else didn't let me get them beforehand, so <laughs> <laughs> payback. I mean, GameStop came through for me. I mean, they yeah. they. Uh, People were always asking me where I was getting the stuff, like the day of the release, and I'm like, GameStop. I mean, anybody can go in there and pre-order it. Just right. you just got to go and do it. Right. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I just hope we see more of that in the future. Just more of that craziness. That hype. Yeah, absolutely. Just mm-hmm. be careful, guys, buying those first graded ten PSA and Beckett cards because <laughs> it will not turn out good for you. <laughs> but it, it, um, that, was, that was crazy. That yeah. was, that that article went viral. Yeah. Like not viral in the Pokemon community, but like internet viral. Yeah, yeah. And I do a lot of consulting for like non gaming stores that only do sports and whatnot. <clears throat> Cause with they need a Pokemon guy and, and all that. And and my phone was going crazy about that stuff too, because they were just like, Why didn't you let me know about this set before it came out? Like, <laughs> I needed to buy more. And uh yeah, it's just it got everywhere. It was a really good thing for the hobby, a really great thing for us. And uh, it really, I think it brought a lot of people back into Pokemon. Yeah, and, in and, general. It's, yeah. and it's blown up, you know, the grading services as well. I saw mm-hmm. your, your video today. You, I mean, we're, you're doing a unique collection of PSA 10 <laughs> version of, of every Psyduck, um, yeah. which 
talking about some of the more expensive side of cards you'll have trouble with, but I'm sure you're not going to go for those. <laughs> um, Which ones off the top of your head? The uh, Tropical Winds from uh, okay. so the 1999 <laughs> Tropical Wind uh, TMB. Um, okay. I think... I think S.M. Pratt has one on eBay for like $500,000. <laughs> he just doesn't want to sell it. It's like the only yeah, PSA yeah. 9 or something. I think um, <laughs> yeah, they, they've done a couple other versions, though, and they're somewhat affordable, um, maybe in 8 and 9s. But uh, that's one of his favorite artworks and, and one of the, I guess, community's favorite artworks of Psyduck. Even though it's not a specific Psyduck card, it features him. You know. Yeah, so that's the thing. So that's where, that's where it's going to be. Uh, good for me is because mm -hmm. it has to be Psyduck. Okay. Okay. So it, it can't just, I mean, if it has Psyduck on the card, I mean, that's that's cool, but right. it has to be specifically a Psyduck card. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Were those so, your first PSA cards that you purchased or own? Um, probably my first purchased. Yeah, some of them actually are my first purchased ones, but they're not the first ones I owned. Okay. Um, I, I've had some that fans have given me over time and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, but some of those are, are ones that I did purchase. Yeah. Okay. Um, are, are you doing a lot of vintage collecting? I know you do some openings, but it is very expensive to do so. Are you, are you I doing do. any collecting on the side? I, yeah, yeah, I do. I'm always on the lookout for stuff. Uh, I'm very, I'm very specific and I'm very picky because mm -hmm. uh, my emotions are attached to things yeah. very easily. So one of the things, and I did a video on this last week, one of the things that I really enjoy collecting is uh, people's old Pokemon card binders. Okay. Uh, from, from, you know, from those first couple sets. And yeah. I like collecting the binders, and I like leaving the cards exactly how they are. I don't take them out. I don't sell them. I don't put <laughs> them in, in, in my binder or something like that. I just like, they're like a little time capsule for me. I like that because the, the one thing for me for the collecting is, I only hold on to the cards that I open myself because I have mm. that attachment to it, that emotion to it. Um, yeah, I have a few things that I didn't open myself, but I can't open them myself at this point. But yeah. that that piece of my collection is something that I don't even think about selling or, or piecing off or, or even sending off to get graded because I like them in the binder the way they are. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's, it's just something fascinating because, you know, that binder meant so much to somebody at mm -hmm. one point in time. Yeah. And I just, I just, for, for my weirdness, I just want to preserve it, you know? That's and really just, cool. I like that. Who knows one day that like someone, maybe I open up someone's binder and they're like, oh, I think that's my collection. And then I could, <laughs> I could, you know, reunite them with their collection, just yeah. give their collection back to them. It, yeah. it would just, it just, it's stuff like that I live for. I That'd just be awesome. It. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's definitely a weird one though. I haven't heard that one <laughs> too often. I, 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 I <laughs> Dude, I, it's I'm, I'm weird. I'm weird. Hey, I know it. We I, all I, are, <laughs> and I embrace it. I embrace Good. it. You know, like I'm yeah. not out there searching for, for vintage packs and stuff like that. I mean, if I came across them, you know, like at a garage sale or something like that, I'd buy mm -hmm. them. But you know, I'm searching for those those old collections in a binder. Okay. That, that's that's what I live for. Very cool. Have you ever done any you know grading yourself? Have you ever sent off cards to PSA or or to Beckett? Never. Never. Yeah. I, Never. At all. I. I've never done it too much myself either. Um, I like, I, I'm a sealed collector. I like having the packs, like having the boxes and try to now, not open them. <laughs> with this, with this whole Psyduck PSA 10, I'm going to have to look into it a bit. Yeah. No, there's, when you start diving into the, especially the Japanese side, they have so many different cards that you've never even heard of. And they're, the artworks are incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, that's definitely a, a good attainable goal for for yourself, and I think very unique for sure with with being Psyduck. Uh, oh, I don't, yeah. I don't, my you know, I, in in the, I guess the the real hardcore collector community. You know, we've got our Mewtwo guys, we've got our yeah. our <laughs> Rayquaza guys that like to just go, you know, get every single version of every card, every language, mm -hmm. every it's crazy. Um, but uh, that's that's where the true love of the hobby lies, you know, doing something like that. And, mm -hmm. and that's always and you got me over good. here collecting side of cards, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> and then hopefully, but, uh, hopefully you'll hit the lottery and be able to buy all the, the, the expensive ones. <laughs> I got to find them. I got to find yeah. them first. You know? yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, that's really cool. I mean, um, you know, that, that's that's something that I like, like I said before, that I really like what you're doing with the modern stuff is just collecting the sets. I mean, ha, ha, have you done that with every set that's come out so far or? or... Um, 
you know, I tried for a while and then, and then I stopped and, and I don't know, it, it just kind of hit me and I was like, I really, I really want to do this. I don't think I really ever, ever gave it a good attempt mm -hmm. uh, to do it. And I also thought it'd be fascinating for, for people to see how long it would take to complete a set. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of times you think, okay, if there's, you know, a hundred and 170 cards in the set, you think, oh, if I buy 400 booster packs, that'll probably get me the entire set. And it's like the complete opposite. Like you're probably still nowhere close to even completing the set. So I just thought it'd be an interesting educational kind of thing, especially for new people into the, into the hobby and um, to just see, how much it takes to actually complete a set if you're just going to open up packs. Yeah. It's a little crazy to do it that way and yeah, not they, and stuff, but yeah. um, it, that's the challenge. Right well, there. yeah, and with all the secret rares and hyper rares that they've added to these sets, it's a yeah, very difficult and expensive thing to do, but it's the most enjoyable thing to do. Because that was, that was that very first thing I did when I got back in the hobby was buy a case of evolutions. Uh -huh. and sat down with my brothers ripped them open and completed a binder reverse hollows full arts everything and at that set it was actually doable within a couple boxes yeah. so um, that was a i don't remember how many cards off the top of my head was in that set i don't but remember it either set. yeah it, it yeah now they got what like 200 some cards in their sets it's yeah, I mean, Cosmic Eclipse, the the one that just came out, it's the biggest set in history. Oof. So it, it, it's, plus all the reverse hollows, gosh. I mean, you know, they're, they're making up because obviously Japan gets a lot of stuff right ahead of us. Right. And I think with uh, Cosmic Eclipse, um, they're they're just kind of playing catch up. You know. Yeah, and they're always combining. Right yeah. Japan's always separating their sets. They they'll do like like for the well, when is Cosmic no? What, what's the new the Sword and Shield one? So yeah, Japan split been... it up to a sword set and a shield set. I'm sure the U.S. Yeah. is just going to make it one set. Yeah, so um, February 7th is the release date for that. Okay, nice. Did you get an so, early look at them? <laughs> uh, just what everybody else is saying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no special treatment here for that. Okay. For that. So um, I, I see the stuff when everybody else sees it. I buy yeah. it when everybody else buys it. So. Yeah. Well, if you're looking to do what Nate's doing, I highly suggest buying in bulk. <laughs> um <laughs> Instead of driving around to every store and picking up pieces, but uh, but search yeah, for them deals too. Yeah, I mean that's one that's one of the things I do on my channel. Show people how to build their Pokemon collection without spending a ton of money at okay. one time. I'm always showing what types of deals are going on out there, and um, you know, like I love Dollar Tree packs. Yeah, uh, I see you open those a lot. <laughs> I, I love Dollar Tree packs. I could open those all day long. I don't know how I feel about those new mystery ones that supposedly have a base set card in every thousand pack. Oh, those uh, the the Dollar General ones I opened up. Yeah, not too long ago. yeah. It's, it's one in every one in every three thousand packs. One in every three thousand. I like how they put what they do: Charizard, Blastoise, Charizard, Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur, and then Venusaur. <laughs> so your one in three thousand lottery card is going to be a common Bulbasaur base set card. But it also says and more, so they could just throw a basic like fighting energy in there. You never know. Oh God, I I can't stand that stuff. The mystery boxes and all that. Even though I've sold some to YouTubers, but I do them right. Um, mm -hmm. Those mystery boxes at Walmart, Target, whatever they are. It, it's 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 not good. Yeah. Uh, um, I I like buying them in the sense of like I'm always just like thinking in the back of my mind like what if this is the one box right here yeah. that has like that one good thing in it um and plus you know, I'd rather me take the hit than everybody else out there right. take it's the great hit, content you know? too people love so, love mysteries <laughs> but the, but that new mystery box that came out I don't know if you've seen me open up the Meyer one no uh, I miss Meyer. Meyer they don't have Meyer out here <laughs> yeah uh it's a Meyer exclusive one but um it's actually a pretty decent one. It's not okay. too bad. Um, I'll have to check it out. I'm headed. I'm headed back to Michigan for the holidays here soon, so I'll. I'll one have in to every get some. twenty-five boxes is supposed to have a graded card. Okay. One in every ten is supposed to have a vintage pack. Vintage pack, yeah. I remember yeah. the first ones that came out with that, you know, way back in the day, and I yeah. got a Holon Holon Phantoms pack, and at oh, the wow. at the time it was like an eight dollar pack, and I was like, this is stupid. So I opened yeah. it. Pulled like a reverse Hollow Rayquaza, got it graded, got a ten, 
but today Holland Phantom packs are like over a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that card sold for a hundred bucks for me. So that was great. But, um, so see, you should love mystery boxes. <laughs> I love mystery boxes, but you have to buy them and then wait three years <laughs> yeah. it, for, it, for it them to be valuable. Like they've just kind of gone downhill. I think they started off great, and then and now they're just kind of going downhill a little bit. Yeah, they're running out of uh, real content or real uh, nice products Product. to put in there, and yeah, I've got they're just riddled with steam siege and. <laughs> the well, that's that the good no thing about wants. these these uh, these Meyer ones. Um, there's no X Y stuff in it. Okay. It's, it's all sun and moon. Okay. Stuff in there. That's good. Um, I can't say I've opened not, too many of that of that of those sets, but uh, I know you got a couple of of them that have Charizards and whatnot. So always good I to would go just for like those. To know, I would just like to know if there's someone out there in this world that's pulled one of those base set Charizards that they always put on the front of those boxes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if there's just some person out there that's just pulled it. I mean, you would think they'd be legally obligated to put what they have on those boxes in at least one of them. I don't know how all that works. Yeah. Um, I would just hope that maybe someone has pulled one. Yeah. I've I never, have, I've never seen any Instagram posts or stories about I know. I, pulling I feel a like PSA 10 shining Charizard. You know, I feel like the first thing you'd do is you'd, you'd pop on social media and you'd post about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I have faith. I have faith in everybody. So hopefully, hopefully it exists out there. There's, in one of those boxes. There's good people in the world. So hopefully mm -hmm. they, uh, <laughs> They're I'm the ones filling up the mystery it, boxes. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so what's what's next for you? What's next on the on the collection? Um, I know we've talked about the uh, the Pokemon or the Pikachu bug car, and and also the lure of the Lugia car that's out there. Yeah. Um, have you? Has there any been? Has there been any more updates on that? Any new stories on where there might be one? No, I, I have a I have a couple good friends that um, that own the Pikachu cars. Uh, a, a few of them. How many are and, there? Uh, there's ten out there. Okay. There was ten made. Okay. Ten made. Um, and I think they know where. I think if if I'm if I'm correct, eight of them are located, and okay. two of them they don't know where where they're at. Okay. Um. Uh, but there was also a Lugia car. I think there was like less than five of those made, but n nobody knows where any of those are at. Wow. So, I mean, they could have been scrapped for parts, you know, taken apart and just made back into a regular PT cruiser. Um, I mean, who knows at this point? Could be sitting in somebody's field in, in Idaho somewhere. Who knows, <laughs> you know? Gosh, that's such a, a – what was – so the, the Pikachu car was made for – the parade, right? For the uh... yeah, just any promotional events. Oh, they were okay. Doing at the time. Yeah, any promotional events that they were doing at the time, they peak cars to it. I think most people do remember it from the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, though. Yeah. Okay. W what about the Lugia car? Same thing. What? What? Yeah. What events were, was that in? I, if there, if we know any information on it, I... events off, off the top. I want to say, may maybe. Pokemon Rocks America. There was a that was kind of like a tour that was going on. The Lugia car might have been at that one. Okay. I'm not sure quite uh, the uh, the time frame of that one, but uh, Pikachu car was used for most just about everything. Yeah. Um, I don't think Lugia car was used a whole lot. Okay. I mean, because when when you got Lugia and you got Pikachu, one's a little bit more recognizable than the other. Right. Right. So you're most likely probably always going to bring the Pikachu car to one. Yeah. But yeah. it, it's so it's so fun. I, I've, um, as you've seen, I, I I've done a video on my channel, um, uh, with the Pikachu car. Yeah, a nice what was that a nice two part series with uh, which a, I forget what I don't. Know. She was just a big Pikachu collector. Yeah, yeah. Um, she goes by uh, Pika Freak Rachel, and um, we just kind of been friends and we've talked for a while, and I, I've known her before. That was actually the first time I ever met her in person. Okay. Um, but we had we have known each other, you know, talked to each other before I started doing YouTube, and I just had this crazy idea. I was like, "Hey, would you be up to doing a video? Like, I know you have this amazing collection, and would you just be up for just like showing off your collection?" And so, um, drove drove to her place and uh, we showed off her collection for. I stayed there for the entire weekend and we filmed, mm -hmm. and it was kind of my. Uh, 
my uh, a passion project to do this like two part series that was just kind of intriguing and it hasn't been done before. It's not a whole lot of stuff on the Pikachu car out there. And uh, Pika Freak Rachel uh, was super super nice to invite me into her home and show off her collection and and ride around in yeah. the Pikachu car. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing about that Pikachu car is, is it has a horn and it plays it plays the Pika Pika sound. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. So we would just drive down the street, and when we come to a stoplight, you just hit that Pika Pika sound. That's amazing. And, uh, and, and le- legit, like, I, you have never seen happier people in your entire life. Like, people were just <laughs> stopping everywhere, taking pictures, just laughing, and just – and the smiles on their faces were just so big. It's it's incredible. It's incredible. So it, it, if you want to see more about the car – uh, Pika Freak Rachel was uh, was who she's on Facebook, so okay, um, that's who who I did the uh, did the video with. So. You should you should have brought it to uh, to Worlds in uh, Washington D.C. and drive the car there, <laughs> do a little road trip. <laughs> that would have been fun. That would have been that would have been fun. I mean, just riding around. It was hard to film as I was riding around because taking in the experience at the same time. Right, which is um, important to do. So, right, uh, yeah, and, and she let me start the car, which was really. A big honor. Uh, so, um, it, it's it yeah. was uh, still one of my most favorite videos I've ever done on the channel. Is it, yeah, they they, they they turned out really good. Yeah, that's got to be one of the weirdest collection pieces out there for sure. <laughs> it, I mean, there's only ten, so yeah. it has to be one of the most rare too. Yeah, absolutely. Are you planning on on going to uh, London for Worlds 2020? I would love to. I would love okay. to. If, if it's uh, up to me, 100%. Waiting for the right people to uh, give you the okay. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've never been out of this country before. Oh, wow. So, okay. Um, you know, I'm based in the United States. Obviously, we talked about Indiana. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would love to. People always ask me, uh, you know, fans from the Breaking Family always ask, you know, like, when are you going to come to Canada, the UK, mm. you know, Australia, France? all these places and, and I want to go so bad. So yeah. um, not just for the event itself, but for the people I want yeah. to meet the people. I want to see the culture, you know, um, I just want to experience it. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's so many things to share. I mean, it, it's, it Pokemon is universal. It's global. And, you know, in, in, in my community, the, 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 the really hardcore collecting community, you know, we have people from everywhere, Australia, uh, mm-hmm. the, the UK, uh, everywhere. And yeah. it's, it's really cool to, um, kind of see what they're collecting, what their stories were like with Pokemon and what they had. And, um, I hope to do some, some conversations with them here with some, uh, the, the international, the outside yeah. U S people and, and kind of understand what you that's like. Go try to try to go to worlds there. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's another, uh, goal of mine there. Um, which, I've made somewhat public is to uh, buy one of the trophy cards that the winners win yeah. over there. Um, you know, the, the trophy card community is a very niche uh, uh, circle of people that, you know, it's, it's the most high end Pokemon card that comes out every year. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's what uh, four of four copies of each place, first through fourth. Yeah. Um, given to the the training card game winners, the video game winner, and did they do the Pokemon Go winner for that one this year? Uh, I forget I who they just, gave the cards to. I think but, it was just a trophy for that. For that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, getting those is a very difficult task, a very expensive task, but it's it's something that uh, a lot of people hold dearly. So I I think I can avoid some of the those collectors by going out of the country <laughs> and uh, getting it for myself, but we'll see how that turns out. I, and and I, I totally understand like wanting to, own it. I don't, but just because it just have it sitting there, just be like, yeah, somebody else won that. Yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, um, I mean, there's also but the, but I totally understand where people are coming from. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm not knocking at all. I'm just saying for me personally, I don't think I could. Right. Well, there, there's, enjoy it. there's the, uh, you know, the, the greedy side of it, I guess, which it, it's a great investment, I think as well. Oh and, yeah. I, um, I, I totally understand that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what about the trophy itself? Now that's an interesting topic because that was brought up at worlds this year with some of us. And 
about uh, if anyone would want to buy those. And there's a few of us that have our eyes on them. And actually, Gem Mitt Pokemon, Zach, yeah. uh, who's one of the staples in the hobby, and I think he'll be on the podcast oh, yeah. soon, he has two of them. Uh, I forget what years, but he did a video on YouTube if you want to check it out um, with the Poke- or with the Pikachu trophies. I think I've, I've, I've seen it before. Yeah, and so... I think it'd be a, a neat thing. Yeah, yeah. I th- That's something that... You know, the figurines are really cool, especially Dragon Ball Z. I don't know if people can see that. Yeah. There's a Goku picture. But I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z geek, and seeing all the cool uh, uh, figures that they have of those um, makes me want to start getting into that stuff, and I'm sure Pokemon would follow very closely. <laughs> so big Dragon Ball Z fan. Yeah, huge. That's That's where my true passion lies. Have you met any of the voice actors before? I have. <laughs> Actually, randomly this past weekend, I was at the a, a mall show, like those typical trading card mall shows. Yeah. And the voice actor of uh, Majin Buu was there. And then also Toby from Naruto. Um, okay. But I had no idea he was there. And I actually got something signed by him. I have a sealed theme deck case of, I saw the, that. of the Buu saga. With it's just Majin Buu up top. I have it wrapped up, so I can't pull it out right now. But I got it signed and authenticated, just because <laughs> he was there. Just had to get it done. You know why not? <laughs> and uh, yeah, he thought it was pretty cool that that I got that signed. And I mean, it's it's on a very thin, you know, the plastic wrap that goes yeah. around booster boxes. So I don't know how long it'll last, but something that was that was cool to do. Are you gonna try to collect some more signatures now? Uh, see, I'm not the biggest fan of signatures. Uh, it's it's a huge booming market right now in Pokemon, but uh, I I lost my love for signatures young as a kid and realized that taking pictures with people was much cooler. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a huge sports person back in the day, so meeting whoever LeBron James or Kobe Bryant, you know, I got a picture with them instead of getting their autograph because it meant more. Yeah, that's just how I how I roll, and so I'm not, I'm not out chasing it, but. I'll get it with the opportunity arises. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Just like, obviously, that past weekend. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, we're coming up here uh, just over an hour, and, and uh, my Spotify membership thing uh, caps me at like an hour and a half. So we're going to end the podcast here. Um, I'm trying to come up with some sort of weird question to ask all my guests at the end. Uh, okay. And the first thing that came to the top of my head the other day was uh, – your most awkward first date story. <laughs> Do you have one? Um, awkward first date. That won't get you in trouble with I, your I wife. <laughs> um, no, because I'm actually going to use the story of my wife. All right. Uh, as the awkward first date. Um, me and me and my wife, who a lot of if people watch my channel, they see on, on my channel, Marie is on there um quite frequently you know we we do some pack openings together and stuff mm-hmm. um but we actually met on a blind date uh and uh, right and um we met in a parking lot in a movie theater and one of her friends was dating one of my friends and they set us up mm-hmm. and so we just met up one day after we both got off work and we went to we were just drove around and like went to Meyer and and Walmart and just like walked around, you know, just like walked around, just like getting to know each other and okay, just, you know. Well, that's better than sitting in a movie was, and not talking to each other, so. Yeah, yeah. But it, it was a very like awkward whole scenario because I had never done that before, you know, mm-hmm. just like randomly met up on a blind date and just walked around stores. Did you buy Pokemon cards? <laughs> N- uh, no. Okay. Did not. We we like looked at video games and things like that. Okay. And, um, we started we started dating uh, two days later. Wow. We we've, we've been together ever Moving since. Moving quick. <laughs> it's been, Fantastic. It's been over ten years now. Well, thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. I don't know if I'll keep that question going, but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna keep it up. <laughs> so it's, it's a good one. You'll find someone that has a really really good. I was yeah. was a little, but it was. You had to be there. It was very awkward. Hey, if you're going to a Meyer on a first date, that's awkward enough. I understand completely. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, uh, dude, Nate, thank you again for uh, joining the podcast and, and giving giving me your time. I appreciate uh, 
the, the Breaking family as well for tuning in um, and for all the follows and subscriptions that came through. Um, so thank you very much. I enjoy talking with That's you. Awesome. And, and um, I hope you have a fantastic holiday with your family and friends. And um, maybe one of these days I'll, I'll be able to meet up with you while I'm in Michigan. I can make the drive down Definitely. or something. And We'll do, it. Can, do a video together. Yeah, I want to get some pictures out of that snap station. <laughs> <laughs> do you have your old snap name? Um, no, I don't. Okay. And I was say, if you did, you bring it over and you can print some pictures on it. Yeah, yeah. But there's one in there, too. That's okay, nice. good. Uh, you're good. <laughs> All right. You're good. Fantastic. I well, appreciate it. I, I want to say it was a big honor. It, it really was. So in any time, I'm welcome back. I'd be more than happy to come back and join just to talk. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And make sure, guys, go follow, subscribe this guy's YouTube at Real Breaking Nate. Uh, I'm yeah. sure everybody here already knows that. Um, <laughs> Instagram and all that, too. Fantastic. Um, anything else you want to shout out? Say hello to your wife or something. <laughs> um, I don't know if she's watching. She might be asleep at the moment. All right. Hey, and hey, Breaking Family, thanks for coming. And if you're watching right now, make sure you follow Pokemon Radar, not just here, but on Instagram. Yeah, mainly Instagram. That's where I post cool pictures. Um, so take a look. I did a lot of cool openings of vintage packs and whatnot. And um, I'm currently obsessed with TikTok, so oh. go follow me on TikTok. I watch Breaking that every Day. now and then. But uh, it's I it's miss my... Vine dearly. Vine was the greatest thing in then my life. Then you're gonna love. Then you, then you should absolutely love TikTok. <laughs> All right, I'll have to I'll have to it get an account. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do some some uh, nostalgic Vine video reviews. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> review review Vine videos on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, perfect. All right, well, thanks again. I appreciate All it. Right, take care. Uh, I'm just gonna shout out my next week's podcast. I did a interview right. with Z and G Emporium. Uh, pre-recorded, you know, I'm going home for Christmas. So, uh, we'll be talking a lot about the, uh, Pokemon market and vintage cards. So thanks again, Nate. Uh, have a good one and, uh, take care everybody. Bye. Peace.